Hello everyone, I am from Kharkiv and uh, it's interesting for me that uh, these lectures were started in my city and this is a good opportunity for me to take part in this popularization of uh, science. Uh, so I am starting, I am a scientist, uh, I am studying uh, lightning in the Institute uh, of uh, Radio Astronomy uh, and uh, we have a department of radio physics of jet space in our institute and uh, we study different uh, phenomena occur in the atmosphere and ionosphere of the earth and uh, one of the uh, most uh, interesting of uh, uh, these and exciting phenomena is uh, lightning. Uh, it is uh, funny uh, that we uh, start our observation of lightning in Antarctica when there are uh, no lightning at all. Why it's uh, possible and why it's even convenient, I uh, will tell you at the end of uh, my lecture. Uh, but uh, now uh, we will uh, start with uh, history. Uh, from the ancient times, uh, lightning was associated uh, with uh, power. Uh, therefore, the most powerful gods of uh, were gods of thunder and uh, lightning. Indra in India, Zeus in uh, uh, Greek, uh, Jupiter in Rome, Thor in Scandinavian countries and uh, Perun in uh, Slavic countries. But now we know that it uh, is not the power of gods. This is a natural phenomena associated with uh, ordinary meteorological uh, processes. Uh, scientists explain lightning as, oh, I'm sorry, scientists explain lightning as uh, follows. Uh, in the thunderstorm cloud, the combination of a low temperature, approximately minus uh, 20 uh, degrees Celsius, and the rapid uh, upward movement of uh, air uh, led uh, to uh, pro a production of two types of uh, particles, small uh, ice crystals, positively charged, and uh, uh, more uh, heavier uh, grapples soft hails and uh, uh, light uh, uh, ice crystals go to the top of the cloud and uh, heavier grapples uh, go to the uh, uh, go down and uh, the uh, separation of uh, charge occur and uh, after that it leads to discharge between uh, the up and the down part of the thunderstorm uh, cloud and uh, this discharge consists of uh, two stages. Uh, the first uh, stage is so-called step leader. It uh, uh, consists of uh, several uh, small uh, strokes and uh, e uh, each of uh, these strokes uh, produce a long line with big uh, ionization and uh, then a return stroke occurs. The current go uh, from uh, this channel uh, uh, like uh, in a wire. Uh, so there are two um, stages of uh, uh, lightning. Uh, until the end uh, of the uh, 20th century, we uh, think uh, that uh, lightning discharge occurred uh, mainly uh, between uh, the uh, ground, uh, between the ground and the cloud. But now we know that only 25% of lightning uh, take place there and 75% uh, uh, of clouds are uh, cloud uh, uh, to cloud and uh, intra-cloud uh, discharges. Uh, also, it's interesting uh, that, uh, as for me, <laughs> uh, that uh, we um, uh, thought uh, that uh, cl uh, clouds, uh, that lightning occurs mainly 
uh, not higher than 15 kilometers. But now we know several new types of uh, lightning, like blue jets, which take place in stratosphere up to 50 uh, kilometers, and the other types of uh, lightning, sprites and elves. Uh, until now, we don't know the exact model of this type of lightning, uh, and uh, sci it is very interesting object uh, for uh, science now. Uh, lightning is uh, associated with uh, optical flashes and uh, thunder. It is interesting that it is possible to use uh, these two effects as a simple diagnostic tool. Uh, everybody knows that uh, uh, the speed of light is much higher than the speed of sound. Uh, so it's possible to cal calculate uh, the time delay between uh, the uh, lightning and thunder and calculate the distance. Uh, three uh, seconds uh, of delay corresponds uh, to one kilometer. And uh, it's possible e easier to calculate the distance uh, to lightning. Uh, uh, and uh, also, uh, lightning produces not only the uh, ordinary emission, optical emission, but also electromagnetic waves in a different um, range. Uh, very low frequency radiation, extreme low frequency radiation. All of uh, this emission is possible to use uh, to diagnose uh, the lightning. But uh, we'll start uh, with uh, ordinary uh, optical uh, observations. Mm. Uh, detection of uh, lightning uh, flashes, uh, routine detection of lightning uh, flashes, started more than 100 years ago. Now every meteorological station make this observation and World Meteorological Organization has a very big uh, volume of data. And now this is a base knowledge uh, of lightning for us. But uh, with the start of the space era, we can uh, also study lightning from the space. This animation uh, show the map of um, distribution of uh, lightning uh, for different seasons. And uh, it's possible to see that is different from one season to another. Uh, but uh, uh, some things, uh, some things uh, is uh, ordinary for every season. First of all, lightning mainly occur over the land. And uh, there are uh, three main sources of uh, uh, lightning, global sources. Uh, uh, Asia sources, Africa sources, and America sources. And uh, lightning also follow the sun. Uh, they uh, uh, mainly occur in the northern hemisphere during the summer. And uh, during the winter period, when the summer is the, uh, in the uh, southern hemisphere, they move to the south. And it's possible and easier to see from this animation. But uh, in spite of any capabilities uh, of uh, observations from space, there are some uh, difficulties. Uh, the main difficulties is that the area uh, of observation from the satellite is uh, less than 1% of the Earth's surface. So this uh, animation is uh, the result of very big averaging. It's possible to see the behavior of lightning in general. But the real-time picture is not possible uh, to uh, reconstruct from this data. There are other possibilities. One of these possibilities is using uh, of very low uh, frequency radiation. Very low frequency radiation, this is example of one of the best, uh, the masterpiece, <laughs> very good uh, observation system, uh, National Lightning Detection Network of United States of America. There are uh, 130 sensors uh, located all over the United States. Uh, its work uh, in frequency range from 400 uh, hertz to 400 kilohertz, and each sensor uh, calculates the azimuth to the lightning and uh, the uh, time delay, uh, the exact time of pulses. And if several sensors uh, uh, detect lightning, it's possible uh, to um, said uh, to locate lightning with accuracy about uh, 200 meters. 
and it's very impressive results is for me and uh, the detection effic efficiency is also very big 95 percent for uh, cloud to ground and uh, up to 60 persons for uh, intercloud lightning and uh, this is uh, the best uh, location system in the world but uh, the diff oh, I'm sorry the difficulties is uh, uh, the uh, detection range is not more than 400 kilometers so it's work only for United States if you want to observe lightning uh, or, or around all the planet uh, you need to put all these sensors on uh, with uh, the distance from one sensor to another uh, in the net uh, uh, well you, you need to make a very uh, big uh, quantity of sensors it's not possible now so we uh, in our institute use uh, our technique for observation lightning the mean um, the average effect of lightning uh, this is uh, so-called uh, Schumann uh, resonances this resonances was uh, predicted by Nikola Tesla in uh, uh, 1899 and uh, then Otto Schumann in 1952 uh, first time observed this effect uh, uh, this effect is work in extreme low frequency range this is uh, uh, the wavelengths uh, of uh, uh, this radiation is comparative with the uh, surrounding of the earth and um, each lightning produce electromagnetic pulse and uh, these electromagnetic pulse rotate around the earth several times for one second it can rotate eight times so it's produce uh, uh, the uh, maximum at uh, approximately 8 hertz and uh, next one 14 hertz next one uh, uh, 20 hertz and uh, uh, so on uh, and um, uh, on each rotation it's amplify themselves and this is like resonance and this effect is possible to observe at uh, every place of the world. For example, this is a picture which we uh, detect in uh, Antarctica at uh, Ukrainian Antarctic Station. This is daily spectrogram. This is time from 0 to 24 uh, hours, one day. And this is frequency from uh, 0 to 50 hertz. Uh, you can see first, second, third, and so on, Schumann maximums. And you can see that uh, the intensity of maximums is changing through the day. And uh, it's possible to use uh, mathematical model uh, to calculate uh, the uh, changes of uh, lightning in the three lightning centers. So it's possible in principle, using one observation point, observe all lightning around uh, uh, the world. And uh, now we start uh, this observation in uh, 2002 in Antarctica. This is a picture of our uh, Antarctic station, Academic Vernadsky. And then we start uh, to make the observation in Arctic and uh, in Ukraine. Uh, there are uh, two uh, things that can destroy uh, this uh, resonance um, picture. Uh, first thing is uh, uh, local lightning. Local lightning produce very strong electromagnetic pulse and it destroy resonance picture. You can see this spectrogram uh, which was uh, taken in Ukraine. And it's possible to see these uh, very big uh, signals which destroy the resonance structure. The previous picture show the resonance uh, system in Antarctica. The there are no interference signals, so the best place of observation is polar region. Another advantage of polar region is absence of artificial noise. There are no artificial noise in Antarctica. So our Antarctic records is, um, have very good quality and it's possible to use it for uh, different uh, scientific tasks. 
I have no time to explain all these tasks, but I uh, say only about one of these tasks. Uh, this is a possibility to use uh, Schumann resonance as a giant uh, tropical thermometer. The scientists from MIT, United States, or Williams, at the end of the 20th uh, century, uh, said that it's possible to use this signal as a thermometer. Uh, you can see this uh, m picture from his article is Science Journal. This heavy line uh, correspond uh, uh, to uh, surface temperature in tropic, and uh, uh, this um, light line correspond to intensity of the first Schumann maximum. You can see this uh, very uh, these curves are very good correlated. Uh, so. Uh, the Schumann res uh, resonance potential can um, show at the, the changes of intensity from year to year, uh, the intensity of line, which is uh, good correlated with global temperature. Why is uh, uh, interesting to use this resonance and not to measure the temperature in a uh, direct way? Uh, because it is uh, very hard to uh, complicate uh, uh, global temperature, the average temperature. You can easily ca calculate the temperature at every uh, meteorological station. This um, picture uh, show uh, the changes of temperatures in uh, different uh, places of the world according to meteor uh, observation. Uh, you can see that in uh, some region uh, you can observe uh, increasing of temperature in uh, other regions, decreasing of temperature. If you want to have uh, the uh, global picture, you need to uh, average all this data and use uh, some technique of calculation uh, to uh, calculate the changes of temperature. This uh, uh, graph uh, show you the changes of temperature through the 1880 to uh, the present time. And it's possible to, uh, but uh, different curves uh, corresponds to different data sets and to different technique of calculation. And you can see that even now, uh, when we have a lot of uh, meteorological uh, stations, it's not, uh, uh, these curves are different. So uh, if you use a different uh, type of um, averaging or different data sets, you take different results. But uh, Schumann resonance automatically uh, average all uh, signals from all lightning. And this is one uh, possibility. Uh, of course, uh, you need to uh, use uh, this uh, traditional uh, way of calculation temperature. But uh, Schumann resonance can give additional information uh, to do this. And uh, if we take information from satellite, uh, we will try to measure temperature from satellite. You measure not the temperature of the uh, Earth's surface. You measure the temperature of the atmosphere from uh, z uh, zero to approximately 15 kilometers. And it's uh, uh, different uh, temperature. The uh, warming in this uh, part of geosphere is um, not so uh, quick as uh, surf uh, surface temperature. And according to some uh, models, uh, yeah, we can observe sometimes even cooling. So satellites cannot uh, give us uh, a lot now. But uh, Schumann resonance uh, can. OK. And uh, this is mainly all my lectures. I tried to explain uh, that lightning is not only one of the best natural show of the world uh, in the world, but also is very interesting and uh, fruitful scientific tools for studying nature. And I am convinced that it will, it will bring us many new discoveries in the near future. Thank you. So. So, if you have any questions? Uh, in the beginning of your lecture, you mentioned uh, lightning like uh, events in the ionosphere at, at high altitude. And I'm wondering, there is very low air pressure there. 
so probably also very few water vapor. So could it be that there is not cloud but something else like cosmic gray particles or something like that? And these have an effect on, on those phenomena? Uh, I'm not a specialist uh, in this field, but uh, as far as I know, uh, there is some uh, initiate, uh, or one model of this effect is some initiate. This initiate is the, the uh, ground uh, lightning, and uh, uh, there is some cha um, uh, se separation of uh, charges between the lower atmosphere. Uh, for us, this is not lower, this is uh, 10 kilometers or 15 kilometers, and for an atmospheric case, it's lower atmosphere and the ionosphere. There is some current in the ionosphere. So they, uh, they initiated mainly uh, by uh, the ground lightning, uh, as we think now. But of course, uh, some other hypothesis is also uh, have place to live. We hope you have enjoyed this video and for more videos go to freakphysics.com.